joining us today. I want to invite you to worship with us, to sing, to give God everything you got right there, right where you are. Join us.
top of my lungs. It just, it just kind of felt like, like when Moses went up on the hill and he just couldn't like look at God because he was so glorious and so great. So when I was singing that, I kind of felt that, like our God is so great. And it's, it's almost like we can't understand how good he is. And then in this moment, as I'm worshiping, I'm feeling that like, God, you are so great. I can almost, I can barely look at you. That's how great you are. God, I pray that everyone watching from their homes would sense that, would sense what we are feeling right now. That you are great. You're so big beyond our understanding. And you are so good and you are in control. God, and you do bring hope and you do bring life to everyone who comes searching for it. So God, may we come searching for you, for everything that you have for us, because you are great. Praise the Lord and welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Pastor Dennis Boudreau. I just want to continue in the Psalms that we were looking at in the previous weeks. I want to look at Psalm 19 today. I entitled my message, The Silence That Speaks to Us. And David just exposes the beauty of the Lord. Hallelujah. And what it's like to be a servant of the Lord. These are the kind of messages that I'll, I love to preach because they really give God a beautiful picture of who he really is. Hallelujah. And so without further ado, let's just get into the word. Hallelujah. Starting at Psalm 19, verse 1. Father, thank you, Lord God, for your word. Enrich your word, O oh God, to our hearts in the name of Jesus. And let it be a blessing to all who hear this day. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It starts off like this. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. Hallelujah. Just look around you and you can see it. Look at night. Look at all the stars. The skies display his craftsmanship. There are a lot of great and talented artists out there that truly do a great job, whether it's carvings, paintings. But you know what? If you look at creation and if you look at all the beauty around you the greatest craftsman is the lord our god hallelujah it says day after day they continue to speak in other words everything around us speaks night after night they make him known they speak without a sound or word their voice is never heard yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I like that. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other. Nothing can hide from its heat. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Wise in him, wise according to his word. The commandments of the Lord are right. There's nothing wrong with them. They are right where they're supposed to be. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. It is right. It is truthful. It is perfect. Hallelujah. It says, bringing joy to the heart. The commandments of the Lord are clear. I love that. There's no ambiguity. It's clear, giving insight for living. See, I've always said that the gospel 
that the Word of God is not a complicated thing. We complicate it. It's clear, the Bible says here, the commandments of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living or showing us how to live. Verse 9 says, reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. In other words, a pure thing that we have within us when we give God reverence. Hallelujah. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. Yeah, I just love the Lord. He's got a perfect balance. It's fair. It's not more, more on one side, not more on the other. It is balanced. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warming to your servant, a great reward for those who obey him. The word of God, it's a warning, but it's also a great reward to those who obey it. That's what's going to be our reward in heaven. The fact that we obeyed the word, we're going to get rewards for that. Hallelujah. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. In other words, the word of God is a cleanser. It cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Just like the blood of Jesus. You know, we get cleansed initially by the blood of Jesus through his forgiveness but we stay clean through his word. Verse 13 says, keep your servants from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Hallelujah. What a wonderful psalm. Psalm 19. It just talks about God's creation, the beauty of it. And then it talks about the power and the beauty of his word. You know, there's a saying that goes like this. A picture says a thousand words. We've all heard that saying. This picture, this painting, this scene, that picture there, that says a thousand words. And that's it. You can't deny what you see. Whether it's a guy smiling, a person reading a book, whatever it is, you can try to figure out something and explain that. It becomes easier for us to understand because we can see for ourselves what the picture is saying to us, even though that picture doesn't speak in itself, like I'm speaking to you now. Our facial expressions have a way to speak also. You know, you can give a look a silent look that raises a question mark. Without a word, your face can raise a, a what? That's my what face. What? What? Or a who? There's something about our face. And if you're really good, you can do all six. You can do a who, you can do a where, a what, when, why, and how. If you're really that good. But when it comes to a picture that says a thousand words, God is infinitely the greatest picture that talks. If you want to find out about God, just look around. And he does it through his creation. Every moment of every day, we can see who God is. Hallelujah. Because everything around us comes from God. Every material thing in this world has its origin in God. Think about it. Trees, homes, Everything that we have, computers, it all originates from the earth. You know, if we're looking for metal, we're going to find it in the earth. We're looking for wood, we're going to find it in the earth. We're looking for water, we're going to find it on the earth. Everything is on the earth. Everything we've created as man, it has all come from the earth. So when we look at the mountains, when we look at the trees, when we look at the birds, that is a picture of who God is, of what he's done. It shows us and describes to us and proves to us that God is real. Everything finds its origin in God. And in this psalm and in so many others, David declares that the greatest proof is in the pudding because of what we see before our very eyes, his creation. David speaks a lot about that in different psalms. What else is there to say? Just look at the skies, the sun, and the stars, and everything else. There was a time, I remember I was traveling with my father early in the morning, and we were going to work. It was still dark. 
and the moon was huge and it was clear and we were heading right toward it and it was just beautiful and that was before he got saved i told my dad i says look at that look at god's creation the moon look at how perfectly round it is I says, God created all that and says, no, no, that, that came through evolution. That came through that big bang and, and, and all this. And over time, it was chipped away and it became nice and round over time, over billions and billions of years. And we had a little discussion about it. This was a long time ago. But I said to myself, wow, how can people actually believe that? Go a step further. Look at the trees. Look at the animals. Everything is reproduces itself. How did that all happen? It wasn't through some kind of evolutionary process. It was not. It was through God. God created it that way. That was God's plan. That was God's blueprint for animals, for humans, for plants, for everything. God's fingerprint, thumbprint, whatever, all of his fingerprints are on every aspect of creation. Glory to his name. It's no wonder that David said in Psalm 14:1, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Hey, the Bible doesn't lie or mislead. Let me tell you. David said this under the unction of the Holy Spirit. You're either a fool or totally spiritually blind if you can hear in your heart the silent scream of nature saying, There is a God. I am real. I really am real. You got to be a fool or spiritually blind not to hear that. At least that's what the Bible says through the mouth of David. Look at 19.1. Let's read this over again. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. Who can create such things? Man can't do that. We can only do something with the stuff that God has given us. And even then we are limited. So much more limited than God. God's unlimited in his creation. The way he does things. I mean, look at all the plants. Look at all the diversity of animals. Look at, I mean, it's just so... So amazing. He says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. Now, that's just the heavens. That's not including the earth here. But he goes on to say, the skies display his craftsmanship. I mean, when God was painting, so to speak, we all look at it that way. But it's interesting. It's beautiful to understand how awesome and how great God is and how he is the infinitely greatest artist that there is. For what he's done. Day after day, they continue to speak. All of those things tell us that there is a God. Night after night, they make him known. It's beautiful at night when you look at a clear sky and you see all the stars. You go, wow. You know, the Hubble telescope can see so far. Now, I think there's another telescope of some kind that can actually go further than that. But I'm not sure. But I think I've heard something like that. They make him known. How can that be some kind of cosmic thing that just happened? It doesn't happen like that. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. And that's what I'm trying to say today here. This is what I'm trying to relate to you. That God is here. Even if you can't see him, you can see the results of him being here. Hallelujah. It's not always about, oh, I got to hear his voice. No, you can see things. Those mountains over there, they speak to you. That sky, that moon, those stars, they speak to us. They make him known unto us. I mean, who else can create that? Like I said, it's not from a big bang. Praise his name. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. Wow, didn't say one thing. The mountains talk to you. The trees, they talk to you. That bird that's flying, he's talking to you, even the insects. I got to be honest here. You know, this is my favorite kind of message to declare the glory of God. I love these kind of messages because I've got an understanding in my heart, even though it's limited, about an unlimited God, about a God who can do all things. And, I, and I've said it so many times and I continue to say it and I will continue to say it in the future as I preach that God is infinitely greater than anything your mind will ever receive. Hallelujah. You know, we think God is a certain way. Well, he's much, much more than that. Infinitely much more than that. Hallelujah. When we talk about his love, his characteristics, 
we don't really understand him fully. We will never because he is so great and he is so big in every aspect of the way. So for me, to make him known as Almighty God in every sense of the word is the most favorite kind of message I love to preach. God, the creator of heaven and earth, who he is in every shape, form, absolutely freaks me out and blows my mind in the very best sense. That's how I see God. That's how I see what Jesus did for us. I mean, there's so many metaphors in the Bible that are so beautiful. Everything is connected. Last week, if you saw Sylvain's message, my wife's message, there was this little story at the beginning how every book is connected. How everything is deep. Everything is profound. All the characters all link together and point to Jesus in one way or another. And all the metaphors are there and all the truths are there. So how can that be just by happenstance or just happen to be? No, God is real and he is awesome. Hallelujah. The loudest things on earth are the mountains, the sky, the sun, the moon and the stars, the trees, the birds, the worms even. As quiet as a worm is, it's loud. And fruit flies even. Those little things, those were all there, created by God. The flowers in the field and the fish in the lakes are also very, very loud. Through their silence, they all scream through the megaphone of creation, there is a God, he made me. That's what I'm trying to say today. Their silence is the greatest 1,000 word evangelical message to mankind. And they all say this, God created me and I am good. Isn't he glorious? Praise his name. Oh, I love to describe the Lord that way because that's who he is. And I wish that those who are listening and those who just happen to click in, even if you get a glimpse of what I'm trying to say, let that attention grab you right now because God is real and his son is real. Hallelujah. He sent the son Jesus 2,000 years ago to die for your sins. And he's coming back soon. Hallelujah. There's chaos around the world. But there is a glorious God who continues to work way above and more powerful than all the chaos that is happening right now. There is a revival in the land for Jesus. There is a revival in the land for an understanding of who God is. And I'm here today to tell you how great and how awesome he is. Look at Romans 1.20 for a second. Just to strengthen what I'm trying to say here, it says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are all without excuse. Nobody can say that there is no God. There is no excuse. You're either blinded or you decide to go totally against him and saying, no, I don't believe that there is a God. This is evolution. You're either spiritually blind by the enemy and that's causing all of this stuff to happen in your life, this unbelief. This scripture here shows us the goodness of God right here. He's letting the world know that he exists through what he has created. Only fools think otherwise, the Bible says. This is a definition of a fool. And I think we can all honestly say that we've all been there at one time or another. And sometimes some of us are there. You know, we do foolish things. But listen, a fool... Is defined like this, a person who acts unwisely or imprudently. Basically, is an idiot, a stupid person that does stupid things or thinks stupid things also. That's what a, a fool is. Simple. You don't believe in God? You're a fool. The Bible says it in Psalm 14, 1. The fool says in his heart, he says it in his heart, there is no God. There is no God. That's a foolish statement. I've never heard anything more foolish than that, than the fact that someone is saying, there's no God. It's just all evolution. I've heard recently Arnold Schwarzenegger talk like that, saying that there is no God. You know, it's just when we're done, it's six feet under. He doesn't believe in that. That is a foolish statement by a foolish person. Because the Bible says in 14.1, I'll repeat it, the fool says in his heart, 
there is no God. And there's millions upon millions of people that think that way. Well, that's pretty blunt, but it's the truth. To deny the message and the words that is silently and quietly spoken to us through creation is to be in a state of blindness and idiocy. And the way you act in this life will prove your unbelief. When you believe there is no God, you will act out foolishly in your life. Hey, I'm just a messenger relaying the message. But the time is coming and is here now. Jesus is here, but he's also coming. We are in the last days, so Jesus must be made known to a lost world. And that's why I preach the gospel. For all those who want to hear, for all those who incline their ear toward the word of God, listen to what this message is saying today. And if you're just tuning in with a click, stay where you are. And continue in this message because this message will change your life. His creation everywhere is telling us to stop and see that God exists and that he has a people in every corner of the globe. Every day now, every person in this world gets to hear the message of the silent creation of God every day. When you get up, you go outside. Every day you look at your house. You look at the running water. Everything shows to you that there is a God. See, God is just and he is fair. He does not exclude anyone. The good, the bad, and the ugly all get the same daily sermon when we go out. Hallelujah. Everybody gets that same silent word. There is a God, the God of creation. Praise his name. See, that's the silent part of God. And make no mistake, just because it's silent doesn't mean it isn't loud. God is very loud. God is very, very loud. But he's also very quiet. Very loud and very quiet. Now David, in this psalm, shifts his thought about who God is. And he shifts it towards the word. So the first six verses, he's talking about the glory of God. This craftsmanship, how the silence of the mountains or the skies, they speak to us, even though they don't make a sound. In verse 7, 8, 9, it goes, The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees, so you get the instructions, we get the decrees of the Lord, are trustworthy, making wise the simple. In other words, if you've been simple all your life, the word can make you wise. The only wisdom you'll ever find that is out of this world and that will change your life and change the life of the people around you is the wisdom of the word of God. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say, the commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. When things are truly, truly right in accordance and lines up with the word, lines up with your life, lines up with the gospel, lines up with everything that is of God, it brings joy to your heart. It brings joy, but not just any kind of joy, the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. You get a lot of that in the book of Proverbs. All the way through the word of God, it's right there. In verse 9 says, reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. God is not unfair. Like I said, the good, the bad, and the ugly can walk outside every day and see what God has done. He doesn't just open up the eyes to the people. Oh, this is only for God. You know. No, he wants people to see what he's done. And nothing is better in this world than the words of truth, the words of life. They have no error in them. Therefore, they cannot mislead you. That's why I love the Bible. Because it is truth, the Bible says. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John 14, 6. In John 6, 63, it says, Jesus speaking to his apostles and his disciples, he's saying, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Or the way we think naturally doesn't really profit anything. What profits in our lives is the word of truth, the word of God. See, they have no error in them, therefore they cannot mislead you. So he goes on to say, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Isn't that amazing? I just love that. That is such 
reassurance in my heart and an anchor to me that tells me that the word of God, there's not nothing like it. That is the word that if all I had left in this world to hang on to, that's what I've got. Whether it's on the Bible in my hands or the known scriptures that are in my spirit that I've memorized over years. Hallelujah. And John 1.14 says, and the word, talking about Jesus, Jesus in the Bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in the beginning. That's what it was. And the word became flesh in John 1.14. So that word, which was spirit, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. And he's talking about Jesus here. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus was a walking truth. He was walking grace. He was walking life. That's who he was. He was a definition and the author of these things. Of all good things. And Jesus also embodies these three things. In John 14, 6, like I read, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He embodies all these things. No one comes to the Father except through me. In other words, he's the way. If you want to get to heaven, if you want to get to know who the Father is, God the Creator, hallelujah, you go through his Son. There is a right way to get there, and it's only through Jesus. There's not a, a thousand or a million ways or, or 60,342 ways to get to God. There is only one way, and his name is Jesus. And I like to say it like this. I am the only way, the only truth, and the only life. So it's very clear. The Bible is not ambiguous in this area. Praise you, Jesus. Now, David describes the word as such. He describes it as instructions, decrees, commandments, and commands, and the laws. That's how he described it. But his son, Solomon, describes it in more ways too. He includes precepts. He includes ways. He includes judgments, statutes, testimonies, or word or words, the words of the Lord or the word of the Lord. On paper, his words are silent, but they're very loud. Those words are alive and they're loud. Hallelujah. When he says, repent, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's, that's not a repent, repent. That is repent. You feel that in your heart. You can feel it when you read it, man. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's firm. It's solid. It has a volume, even though it is silent. And when spoken and believed, they are everlasting without adding any sorrow to it. I love that about the Word of God. He doesn't add sorrow to His Word. When we believe who God is, when we believe the Word of God according to who we are in Christ, it's not disappointing. It's alive. It brings you life and joy. Hallelujah. There's no sorrow. You can sense and feel here in this psalm the heart of David relishing in what he speaks. When David speaks about God, he relishes in that. It's like put some gravy on the fries type of thing. And I'm going to explain it a little bit deeper. His heart is bursting with a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. And it should be the same for us. The effect can be the same if we position our hearts in the right place, that place of worship and adoration. And David was an amazing worshiper, admirer of God. He adored who God was and all about him. He was in that place of holiness, which simply means to be separated unto him. He knew he was separate unto God. He knew who he was in order to do his will according to his word. That's where we need to be, separated unto God. That's what holy means. It means separated unto God. We've made a decision to follow him. Hallelujah. And everything else, in second, third place. God is first in our lives and foremost in our lives. When we get up in the morning and we go to bed at night. Hallelujah. We've had our day with him. That's what it means being separate unto him. Doesn't mean perfect. Now, let me explain this feeling I've been talking about. Okay, this bursting of joy. This, Even though it doesn't do it justice. Now, I have... In my home, running water. Hey, that's the, that's the world we live in. We all have running water in our home. I turn the tap on and voila, we have water. 
Water is very simple, very basic, but very good for you. It has life in it. It cleanses us. Yet it's very simple, very needful to our lives. It doesn't taste anything unless you add a flavor to it. Now, I have something else in my home. It's a machine called SodaStream. And this machine uses a CO2 cartridge and infuses the water with carbon dioxide to make simple tap water into a soda. In a moment, I can change this very basic, very simple water into joyful, bubbly water. It explodes into the water and gives it a celebration, a real party, if you want to look at it that way. It makes the water happy. All the bubbles are floating around there. And that's what the Word of God does to our hearts. It does that soda stream effect. We start reading it, it does that to us. I remember my wife, when she was 16, she started reading the Bible. But it didn't mean very much to her, so she started reading for a couple of weeks, and then it just kind of fell flat. But when you receive Jesus... The word becomes alive. Hallelujah. It's had that soda stream effect that it does so with water, but it does that to your heart. Hallelujah. There's bubbles of joy and celebration and party going on in your heart when you begin to understand what the word of God says. It's like we say, we get it. We get God. And we finally begin to understand when we look up and around us, we go, God. When I became born again, folks, I was so on fire for God. I never done a backflip, but inside of my spirit, I was doing backflips and backflips and backflips because I was so, so excited about being a child of God, understanding what Jesus had done for me and knowing that I was saved. We see it, we hear it, and we get it. That's the soda stream effect. And the world needs to know about these spiritual bubbles that are partying in our hearts. These spiritual bubbles are the real reason for living as David says. It's all in the Word. That Word is alive. They are worth more than gold. The words of God are worth more than gold. Now, imagine this for a moment. I'm going to go a little step further here in what David said. Put all the silver, all the gold, find all of it. Just mine it all if you have to. Just that thought about having all the gold mined in this world on the earth under all that rock, and somehow put it all in one place, all in bricks and whatever, all gold bricks, same with silver, same with bronze, same with all the jewels, the rubies, the emeralds, all the riches, all the cash has been created, whether it's a peso, a US dollar, a Canadian dollar, rubies, whatever it is, just put all that, all what is of value to this world, put it all in one area, and all that stuff, does not compare to the riches of the Word of God. Does that compute in your heart? Well, if it doesn't, it should. Hallelujah. Because it does in my heart. Even though it blows my mind in a very best way, it still computes. Hallelujah. So I just begin to think, wow, God, your Word is so powerful. This is what I wanted to do this morning. So as I finish up, let me say this plainly. If we obey this wonderful Word, this Word of God, it can keep us cleansed and pure before Almighty God. Yes, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. But there is a cleansing that we need to go through every day. Then it's done through His Word. Because if we don't get cleansed daily through His Word, we will go back into the things that we shouldn't be going back into. Well, that's what the Word does. It's a daily cleansing. Hallelujah. It's an in-depth cleanser that can squeaky clean our hearts. It has a transforming effects to the minds of the listeners and also the doers. It's good to listen, but it's, you must also do also. It creates in us a transformed mind. Hallelujah. And I'll be looking at that next week. Praise His name. See, there's a lot of talk about trans this and trans that. But when it comes to God, the only transitioning or better yet, trans formation is this. The transforming of our minds according to his word instead of conforming ourselves to the things of this world and only his word is able to do that it is it's the only thing that can do that for us that's why david speaks so highly of his word that's why solomon so speaks so highly of his word that's why jesus speaks so highly of the word and says these words are life and they are spirit because the real world is not here in the physical. 
The real world is a spiritual world because from there comes all of this that we see. Hallelujah. See, God created everything out of nothing. He spoke it by his word. So that word is in us through the word of God, through the Bible. Hallelujah. Through those 66 books from Genesis to Revelation, they have a way to come to life in us. See, that word of God has such a powerful effect on you that by growing in the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God, who is Jesus, you can even do the same things as Jesus did. All that miracles and stuff, the words of knowledge, knowing what's going through the mind and the hearts of people, because God reveals it to you. You are not God. You are a vessel, an open vessel, ready and waiting for God to use you as you submit yourself to Him. You can do the same things. Praise His name. See, that's what the beauty of the word. Glory to God. I've talked to you plainly today. It's the way I love to talk about Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. The three in one, the Holy Trinity. There is mysteries, but doesn't mean it's complicated. It just doesn't mean the things that we don't understand. We just put it aside and we work with the things we do. And God will reveal it to us. But what we do sometimes, we strive too hard to understand everything. And when we don't, we get all disappointed and we say, oh, this is too hard. Take it one day at a time, one word at a time, one sentence at a time, one chapter at a time, one book at a time. And you'll find that it's not that complicated. You'll find the context here. But you got to take the time and study. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, knowing how to decipher the word of God. I love the simplicity of the word that because you can understand it through creation. See, that's why anybody can come to him. You know, the smart, intelligent ones and the not so smart ones. In other words, it's for everybody. That's the love and mercy of our everlasting God. So take the time today. Take a look outside. There's a sermon there for you. Look up and down and look all around because everything living and not living was made for your use on this earth. Hallelujah. I hope you enjoy your day today. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. We'll see you next week. Hallelujah.